Hello, and welcome to the video version of the Left of Greg podcast. I'm Brian Marin, the host and creator of the show. As always, I will be joined by human behavior expert, Mr. Greg Williams, who the show is affectionately named after. On the show, we discuss different topics through the lenses of what we call human behavior pattern recognition and analysis. If you'd like to find out more about what that is, please check the links in the episode details and go to our website to learn more. Please don't forget to follow us on social media. The links are also in the episode details and hit the like and subscribe button to help support our work. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the show. All right, Greg, good morning. Let's go ahead and get started today uh, with a topic that we talk about often, but we'll, we'll stick to just the specific topic today of um, using a think kind of versus using a thing. So I'll, if it's okay with you, I'll quick kind of define what we mean by that, give some opening remarks, and we'll throw to you for some examples. How does that sound? Love it. All right. So um, you know, what, what we do at Arcadia and then talk about here on left of Greg is, you know, we, we kind of provide non-material solutions to, to problems, right? How do you, how do you think your way out of a really hard problem? And, um, you know, for us, it's through training and coaching and education and all that, but you know, there's different ways to, to approach it, but humans are kind of, uh, sort of wired in a sense to, uh, look for a thing with a G rather than a think with a K and, and I kind of want to explain a little bit why. So humans look for technological solutions to difficult problems, and it has always been that way. So whether we're talking about the invention of the wheel, hand tools, metallurgy, or the latest app on your iPhone, humans are engineers. It's hardwired, in a sense, into our DNA, and it's essential for our survival. Absolutely. It's such a powerful human trait that we will often look past simpler solutions on our quest to accomplish a tremendous feat and even when we do create a technological solution or a thing with a G, we rarely use it to its full potential because we didn't provide a think with a K to go along with it. So why does this happen? Well, part of the reason why this occurs is because we often get so focused on the symptoms of a problem that we don't take time to accurately define or understand all of the contributing factors that led to a situation. Most problems that we discuss on this show and that we deal with in our work uh, are complex in nature. And the problem with that is humans don't like complexity, right? We, we want things to be simple. Is it A or is it B? Is it a zero or is it one? Uh, we want to believe that decisions are binary and that either the right choice was made or the wrong choice was made. But the main reason why I believe we look for a thing with a G is because having a tangible object that I can see, touch, taste, feel, is much easier for me to understand and relate to, and therefore it makes me feel better. Um, you know, Greg, if we only got rid of guns, there would be no more school violence. So, so guns are the problem. There you go. Or, or in the exact same manner of thinking, uh, the only thing that's going to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. This type of thinking will ensure that none of these problems will ever get solved. So. Right. Maybe, just maybe, this has more to do with the person than it does with an inanimate object. Maybe we need to think with a K instead of a thing with a G. So that's kind of just my basic opening remarks, Greg, on, on you know what what we're going to get started on the discussion today. But I will I will throw it to you to kind of o- open it up from there. So you hooked me already, just so you know. <laughs> so uh, uh, one, we are not saying that technological advances aren't important. Two, this is going to air during what's called the SHOT Show, which used to stand for sports, uh, hunting, outdoors, and, and uh, technology now, but, you know, tradecraft technology back then, meaning a fire starter for your camp, a uh, grommet for your tent, okay? It, I, it's, it's advanced. I, I wonder well, how look, many people attending this event this week, if you're listening to it, had, had no idea that SHOT Show actually stood I, for something. I guarantee it. I, I will guarantee you that if you took a poll, uh, an it's Wednesday, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and if you went around quizzing, I wish we were there. What we should do is send Collier to quiz people. Collier with just a microphone and no shirt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he just walks up and grabs people by the head and asks them questions in his, his uh, grunt style. Uh, uh, so the uh, next point, Brian, uh, material. Uh, uh, it, it sounds French, material r- yeah. versus material. And and many people get that wrong and spell check try to yeah, tries to change non material <laughs> over and over and over what we're saying folks is that this is a thing a thing you hold you turn it on you plug it in a think is you using your critical thinking skills in, in the moment they have to be companioned they have to fit together if they're separate 
then if, like like for example uh uh in in brian i got like four examples but yeah. i'm gonna spread them out so so i i, I it don't just sound like I got diarrhea of the mouth. Think of Rube Goldberg, first of all. Uh, Rube Goldberg was making fun of the exact point that we're talking about by making these elaborate machines that, you know, that started with a uh, mousetrap and that got the dominoes going and then the oh, ball yeah. started rolling. Remember those old things? Look yeah. up, Rube. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, you'll love the Just, the just to press out. like just down on your toast or something yeah, yeah, like exactly. that. Like it's a big elaborate it, thing that, that so, flips the egg in your, in your pan. You know what I mean? And he was at ground zero seeing yeah. that change. Remember that, right? Yeah. So uh, uh, there's this uh, uh, sleep is overrated, everybody. And Brian, uh, now we've got Brian hooked on the let's get up at four. Uh, in no, the I, I cannot completely. sleep past four in the yeah. last three weeks. So here so I am. There's this uh, there's this movie on the free uh, uh, channel, and it was called uh, not what about Bob? Something's wrong with Ted. Look out for Rob. Something like that. And it's about this little uh, uh, computer uh, egg that this kid gets that's demented. Uh, something's wrong with Terry. And whatever the name of the, the little robot is, I'm that's trying the name to help you, but I can't song. remember. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But you'll see it, folks. And it's an animated one. That's how you can okay. tell. And so every other kid has this egg that's this intuitive AI that thinks and it becomes his buddy. So I go, OK, this is ridiculous. I watch six minutes of it. I time myself. Shelly and I have a 15 minute rule. Uh, most films are about an hour too long. So you watch 15 <laughs> minutes of the film. If it blows, you broom it, never watch it again. And you keep a log so you don't get roped in because sometimes they reintroduce something like, oh, take a look at this, right? So so I'm watching this and six minutes in, I go to IMDb. I got to look it up. What is this supposed to be about? Because my ridiculous brain doesn't make sense. And it says the wonderful relationship between AI and humans and how we fall in love and it can be our friend. That's unrealistic. That's not what it is. Okay. You've just found another way to waste time. It's a thing yeah. to waste time on. Right. So, so uh, people would, would argue with me and say, well, the first person shooter game is teaching you dexterity. It's not teaching you shit. It's just giving you an excuse to it's, go in and have a beer and some popcorn be and waste better time. at the game. As, at, at itself. You. Yeah. yeah yes. but, but so, <laughs> so, so here we go again, shot show. Welcome to the party. So <laughs> I want to give you just one story and we'll, we'll light this candle. But because now everybody understands the press. Yeah. So I'm in the army. And one of the things that they issue you is uh, extreme cold weather gear. Remember uh, your TA 50, the gear that you are issued when you first come into the military, 99% of it, you will never use. Yeah. I remember going into Iraq and having to go through the Marines deployment cycle shit and go into that, whatever you guys called it. It's a very uh, simple term, but the distribution point and, and getting stuff. And I go, I'm going to Iraq. And they're giving me cold weather gear and they're giving me this stuff. And I go, no, dudes, I'm not going to be there during cold weather. Oh no, you have to have this steel pot, this boot, this shit. So, and so here I am carrying this stuff. So I had to get a Connex as soon as I drop in a rack, put it all in there so I could turn it in. Cause you know what it's like turning it in. Oh no, oh, yeah. this is damage. I've never opened it. No, no, man. You have to, right. Yeah. So, so here's the extreme cold weather gear. Get it in your head. It's this uh, uh, green parka. That's the biggest thing that you've ever seen that you can make a tent out of with this old liner that's made out of some uh, uh, Latvian sheep mountain goat <laughs> wool thing. It's so odd looking, right? And you have to sit there in front of the guy and you have to stitch it in. So to put it together, they have these wood, long wood dowels, Brian, and you put them into rope to hold them together like an old uh, uh, seafarer's button. You get what I'm trying yeah. to say with a loop of rope. And then when were you in the army, like 1820 or no, something? No, this is brand new stuff. They're still issuing it today. I promise you somebody right now in the army is going, damn, he knows what he's talking about. So you got to use that same system to put on the hood. And then you put on your cold weather pants, which right. are stitched. So you have an over layer of the parka. So once you put it in, it's like getting into a fireman suit. It's a big onesie. Right. And it's got these leather tabs at all of the corners and big wooden buttons, buttons that are this big, uh, the size of a half dollar that you put into the leather loop. Why? Because they engineered that entire suit thinking that you're going to be wearing, wearing mittens, gloves yeah. and it's going to be 16 below zero. Yeah. And so you have to be safe. The time it took to be a cobbler in a, in a stitcher, witchery, whatever those people are called. And, <laughs> yeah, and I don't, you know, I, I don't, don't I know, know what the, the exact terms for it. Well, I'm not a doctor. So, uh, um, stitch witchery is that the what you time, said? Yeah, <laughs> the time it took to put that Harry Potter suit together. Yeah. Okay. Was brilliant. They considered everything, even the type of fur to right. put on the linings to, to, uh, filter out the snow in the air. 
because the fur can't get wet. You get what I'm trying to say? So they got, you know, uh, uh, again, Estonian uh, rabbit fur collar and gloves or whatever. And all those people call me. I don't know if you got a rabbit in Estonia. So here's my point. Every single soldier that's ever got the extreme cold weather gear and went out into the field into wherever, because in Michigan, uh, 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 Oregon, Alaska, for their training, they always went to the bathroom in the field because you have to and shit in their hood. So with all of the time that the United States Army spent designing this brilliant cold weather gear that saved more lives than cancer research, okay, what thing didn't they think about? They didn't think when you take all of this off and you've got to go to the bathroom and it takes a little extra time that when you squat down next to a tree, your hood is going to be right below your ass. No engineer sat there, Brian, and put those two things together. So for time immemorial, since the beginning of issuing that parka, soldiers have shit in their hood. Ask them, find a U.S. Army soldier. Folks, go out on the street. And when you see a veteran, go, hey, were you ever issued this parka? And they'll tell you the story. You won't believe it. I shit in my hood. And I apologize for saying that word. Uh, we can go poop or, uh, uh, you know, beep it out. But everybody will understand it. Brian, so how can you be so smart to create a thing that's yeah. going to save lives and protect people and not consider that you have to poop while wearing it? And, and, and the effects have been now, well, 40 years that I know. You know what I'm saying? Just over 40 years. Yeah, and, and there's there's countless examples of even like in 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 um it just like the civilian marketplace, or whatever, or a, a, a sending a product to market. Some company puts all this money and research into it and user interface, and then there's some design flaw in some specific situation like that that almost renders it useless in some yep. ways, right? It almost yep. becomes, oh my god, we didn't see that, we never thought of it in that situation, and it's completely ruined. I, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to think of one right off the top of my head right now. I probably will at the end of the pod or like. Uh, well, I'll throw one today. to you that'll get you know your I mean? get, get your hackles up. Okay, so so. Uh, I've got a couple of other rudimentary examples, folks, but I want to go right to one that's going to get uh, Brian going because we discuss this often when we're doing the left to Greg in a rental car on the way to training. Yeah, There are companies out there that make their money selling you school shooting training and saying that their rapid uh, uh, assessment of the situation with guns and running down the hallways and shoot the shooter and do all this other stuff. And they got cool little acronyms for what they do. And they say, this is how you do it. There, there's two schools right now that, that are complete parlor trick schools that are it, it's schools of thought. Let me get this right because yeah, I'm angry. Yeah, yeah. And I know you're going to be angry. Yeah, yeah. There's a school of thought that you can use data to pick out the likely school shooter. And there's a thousand books being written and that guy's running around doing seminars. Then there's the other side. And by the way, he's 100% right after the school shooter reveals yeah, himself by it. shooting. After the and fact. the other ones that say, hey, listen, uh, 10 or less homicides from a school shooter will occur uh, because you have had this training and you'll be able to react after he's killed a few people and, and killed the shooter using these tactics. Brian, what, what are we doing? That's a thing versus a thing. They're saying this architecture with these guns at this time will create a, a staunch intervention against it. How about going to every school where there's been a school shooter and knocking on the door and asking the kids, Brian, how many kids knew Columbine? How many All kids them. knew uh, everyone. Portland? How many kids and, knew Florida? Come on. And, and, and th so this is, um, this is what we're talking about today, right? This so is the heart of it. Th this is the heart of it. Different cases like this. So school shooting is a perfect example. Um, sadly, we, sadly. We look for technological solutions and we go, well, I want to go, I need an app. I need some sort of information to report somehow. Um, yeah. We need to armor up the schools. We got to have metal detectors. We need bulletproof windows. Hey, let's uh, let's get some training to how to barricade uh, students in a classroom. How to lock down. We'll we'll, we'll inter um, we'll interface with all the local law enforcement and, and first responder agencies to come up with great plans. Yep. Not saying that's not necessary. I'm saying you're already starting at. This is what we're accept you when we're you start accepting. there, you're accepting it. You're accepting you're exactly the fact that right. it's going to fucking happen. And you know what? You reap the world when then uh, I'm not saying you don't need that. Why are you putting up all of your money and resources into reacting to an incident that yep. is very, very easily preventable? Every school shooting that I personally have studied, which is pretty much everyone that's happened in the United States. In some ways, there's some that I don't remember or don't recall the details. Since but the early I 1900s. 
since the early 1900s, 1925, Bath Township, yep. Michigan. There's, yep. there's ones before that, especially in the Old West and stuff like that, but those usually had something to do with some other shooting involved that I found some research on. But the first big one in 1925 in Bath Andy Township, Kehoe. Andrew Kehoe, laced the, uh, uh, made a V-bed, a vehicle-borne IED, uh, wired the school with explosives, blew up the school, killed a bunch of people, blew up his car yep. in the parking lot, killed a whole bunch of folks. So this is now we're going on 100 years almost here in the United States alone. Um, since this stuff it, it has been going on, every single one could be prevented. There, there is no, this came out of nowhere, or this was a domestic violence that spilled over into the parking lot of a school. No, they're, they're, they're all of the pre-event indicators are there. So yet, because of where we're at now, and it happens so frequently, hey, Greg, only five kids died on this last one. I mean, that's a, such a fucking unreasonable standard. That is, but it, it is it, the standard. Once but, you but say it's that, horrible. Yep, yep. It, it's, 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 I, I, yep. we should not tolerate that we should not accept that we should not be okay with that but we are every time we get funding and we take some course and you pay for it with your tax dollars and that school district hires a company to come in and they this is what they do all right guy's going to come in this way and he's going to shoot up the place and you're going to do this if that's what you're investing in you reap the fucking whirlwind it's now yep. your responsibility so we're going to be talking about this and and i want to go back and forth because i want to give analogies that you can sink your teeth into why because your school board your police department your mayor is going to come up and they're going to say something and they're going to say well we need to harden this we need to do this we need to do that listen having an a, a, a transparent backpack for your kid's school doesn't mean you're absolving yourself of thinking does this kid have a gun those two aren't on the same right. plane so think about a, a plane coming into Florida from Bogota, and those passengers are more likely, because Colombia has more uh, uh, cocaine distribution than any other country in the world, right. they're more likely to be carrying uh, 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 drugs, okay? Right, than do the we, one coming in from Canada. Yes. Exactly. Do, so, yeah. so do we make them have transparent uh, uh, bags? No. Uh, do we have technology that supports sniffing and checking? Yep. But we also got boots on the ground. We got dogs people on the ground. Stand there and and go, we got detection officers. And guess what? The detection officers are great. They go, hey, here's something wrong. And they bring the person over. And guess what, Brian? That's a form of intervention before the fact. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Now, right. what do you go? You go further to the left of bank and you see that there's people on the ground in Colombia trying to disrupt the, the, the production of cocaine. And then there's problems with it. Like even in America, when you say every kid has to have a clear plastic backpack, Somebody's going to be making a lot of money on that, Brian. Yep. You get what I'm saying? So there's going to be yep. uses for that money. So let me give you an analogy. There was an agency, and I don't want to say in Colorado because I live in Colorado and people will hunt me down and seek me out, even though I'm right, because they'll say, oh, you shouldn't have you know, brought that out into the clear light of day. Well, that's the only way you kill a vampire. So uh, uh, they have this program called Cops uh, and Coffee, Coffee with Cops, those right, kind of right, things right. all yeah, over. Yeah, they right? all over the place, yeah. So during one of them, uh, a guy comes up and goes, what does your agency need? And the, the chief uh, uh, police officer or sheriff, uh, let's keep it obtuse, says, uh, uh, listen, we need a lot of things. And the guy says, well, here is around $150,000. I don't want to be too specific. Uh, here, uh, do what you want. Make your officer safer. First purchase, Brian, was sappy ballistic plates for rifle shots. Now, I'm not saying coppers listening that you don't need those ballistic plates. What I'm saying is that every Marine that was in combat that was next to me in Iraq that was laying down when a bomb just blew off or somebody was shooting said, oh, my God, I wish I had the old sappy plate carriers. And I would go, why? And they would go, well, you're wearing this big barrel. We had a barrel with straps that went around you with all the, you remember the groin protection and the neck protection, all those other things, because I came in later in the game. The people said we were more mobile. We could fight. We could move with these younger sappies. But the idea was that the sappy was going to stop the terrorism. That's not what breaks right. the cycle of violence, it, you see? So so, so let me give an analogy goes, about it's, it's, it's the Here's the symptom. Let's just it's, treat Right. It's a thing, though. You yeah. see what I'm saying? This thing on my chest will make me uh, safer. That's what well, it is. Well, it, but it's not going to if you expose yourself needlessly to violence. See, it balances. It's, so, it, and, and that's the Tommy boy analogy. That's it's, the Tommy it's, boy. It's, well, well, this one has the guarantee on the box. Right. And, 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 and li listen to me, that means that you're going to take more chances. So it's going to even out. You want to cancel culture, cancel that thinking. So I want to take you to the carnival. 
So what's the number one thing people go to the carnival for? It's those cars that follow each other over and over. No, a carnival has to lamprey itself to the shark. Why? Because a carnival isn't strong enough in almost every instance to stand on its own the test of time. So carnivals go with things and they become transient. They hook themselves up to another thing and you follow them around. And so you're in, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say the nasty word. You're in Gunnison, 6,000 people, and the rodeo's in town. Guess what you're going to get? You're going to get a carny. And yeah. that's going to bring what? That's going to bring carny folk. And, and there's going to be, where's my daughter? And there's going to be all kind of other issues with the farmers. But the one thing that the people go for consistently is the gosh damn elephant ears. What, mm-hmm. what do they call them? Funnel cakes. Yeah, funnel cakes. So, so even Shelly. Shelly would be mad. If you, if <laughs> They're wanna, so good. Like Shelly's got a gun and you're fighting Shelly uh, tooth and nail. All of a sudden go, I've got funnel cakes. It'll change the whole dynamic of your shootout. <laughs> so here's my thing to you. Some person in the crowd said, this is the most amazing thing I put in my mouth. I come here every year for the funnel cakes. And they went home and they looked around the Sears catalog and said, holy shit. They got a deep fryer. I can make this at home. Yep. So then they went home and they found out that the funnel cake was really easy to make. And it's basically sugar that you drop in, you know, sugar, the oil. Yeah. And it's like a yellow cake, right? You get yeah. what I'm trying to say. Not like a wedding cake, like a really good cake. It's like a standard yellow cake dough. And then you go, okay. So you ate nine of them in the first seven <laughs> days that you had that deep fryer. <laughs> then you started figuring out, okay, wait a minute. What do I, I do with all this grease? Yeah. No, no, no. That's next. That's okay. next, Brian. The Sorry, timeline yeah. is, can I deep fry a sausage? Can I deep fry an Oreo? Can I deep fry a hot dog and a pat of butter? So like huffing the jankum, you're all huddled around the light of the gosh damn uh, 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 deep fryer. You see what I'm saying? Deep frying everything in the house. Can we eat it if we deep fried celery, you know, passing all the shit. Now you look at your counter and you go, here's this immense thing I've got no counter space for Mm -hmm. because I had to put away the Keurig, right? Then you look and you go, I've got three quarters of an inch of grease Grease. and every item for four feet around that son of a gun. And, and guess what? You put it away and you never bring it out again. And then somebody goes, hey, Carnival's in town. And from the next room, you go, meh. Why? Because we all want the thing, Brian. We want the thing. And then when we find out that the thing isn't what gives us the pleasure, when you find out that the thing doesn't make us safer, that we still have to use the tactics and we still have to, to overcome a, a wise, cunning enemy. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Then the thing, now we've spent all our money on the thing. And we don't have one person going, okay, well, how do we think our way out of this? That's so, my fear. The so, carnival, carny folk fear. No, and, and that, that's, that's the idea of it makes us, the thing makes us feel better, right? And, and it goes, okay, well, here, I've got this now. It's like a talisman. Yep. It's, it's something yep. I keep in my pocket. Yeah, it, you're it's, exactly it, right. it's like I, I, I now feel better because I can do this now. Well, you just hit on the other problem with that is too. Well, now that we have it, we got to use it. Like yep. we, we have to use it. So, so yeah, we got this giant military, you know, vehicle and MRAP, MRAP. for, yep. for our, our police agency. Well, we got to use it now because, because we, we spent money on it. We did like, we, so, so you're forcing the use of, of something that you, you're, 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 you're solving a problem that doesn't necessarily exist or yep. you, you, what are you trying to do with this? And right and, now you've got a we'll SWAT be- team commander that's typing you and going, you son of a bitch, yeah, you don't we had know an what officer shot, about. you don't know about yeah. it. And you know, if we wouldn't have had the MRAP, and, and I'm telling you, what did you do before the MRAP? Yeah, did you just yeah exactly. Let the coppers this, die? This is, this is what I'm saying. It, exactly. It is, like, there's, there's certain events that that will change the way things are done and tactics, techniques, and procedures. And there's always those catastrophic anomalies that are statistically very, very rare that do require some change. So, yep. so you'll say like the big uh, bank uh, shootout in Los Angeles years oh, ago yeah? that changed away because they were wearing body armor, had AK-47s, and the police yep. were literally outgunned until someone from the SWAT team could get there and all the stuff. So they went, hey, you know what? Maybe we need to have this tool available like in the vehicle for certain yep. specific situations. Sure. But here's the problem with that. Now, now it's there. Now we got to yep. use it. Now it's no longer just for these, um, uh, you know, highly catastrophic, but, but low, uh, you know, uh, was incidents, the same type you know of police saying? rifle used in Burlington. That's what and I'm what saying. Were, what were the outcomes? You're so, but, so but now listen, instead of using it, on a guy, to, we have to use that in hushed tones. Cause right now a copper is going, man, my police rifle saved my life. Well, not so much for some coppers that died. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Because they didn't have a commensurate level of training. And I, I draw to you the, 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 the training in Dinkeller. 
Brian, uh, you take a look at that and you say, okay, uh, uh, if Dink Heller would have had a police rifle, uh, he'd still be alive today. That's not true. Yeah, that's you, not you true. Dink Heller you... never went to his weapon until too late. And we're not going to try to bash Dink Heller. We're just saying that, look, if your training isn't commensurate with whatever tool it is that you have, do you see what I'm trying to say? Then it's rendered useless or overkill. It's so too much. So here, here's the thing. Explain to me how, well, explain to everyone listening. We, you, we, we just went from, from a, dealing with school shootings to dealing yep. with police response to these or, or purchases or, or uh, you know, because yep. we always get the, oh, we don't, well, we don't have the money for that. Everyone's got, there's money out there for everything. That's such you a rude choo- thing to say to choose, us. You choose to spend it elsewhere. Okay. okay. That's a choice. But, but, but we're, we've got, these are two different things. You're talking about funding and training at a police department. And then you're talking about school shootings, Greg, what the hell do those two things have to do with each other? What do you mean here? Like you, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Uh, ex- like just, just explain for the listeners on, on how, how these two are the same, same problem set in a sense. So there's 18,000 law enforcement agencies in the United States. That means uh, somewhere over 800,000 law enforcement officers sworn in the United States that are operating on the streets. Um, they have money for training. They have forfeiture funds. They have buyback programs that give money. They've got the Department of Defense program 1033, which is literally given uh, half a billion of dollars of, of military surplus to law enforcement agencies uh, 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 just since 2017, not since Jeez. the inception of the program that happened back in 1990. I thought you were going to say, yeah, since no, the no, 90s. It was, no, it was $6 billion since the 90s. It's been over half a billion dollars just since 2017. Administrations have been uh, loving it and hating it. Uh, uh, I side with the Obama administration camp on this, that I remember Shelly and I couldn't get uh, between the funny Dunkin' Donuts and and uh, uh, the the store that we were going to. Back then, they had a J.C. Penney in Montrose. Uh, uh, they don't any longer. And J.C. Penney had a, a section where everything was discounted. I could buy yeah. shirts for a dollar and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this came from right no shit take a look at the tag um but we couldn't get from the dunkin donut in montrose which was our stop because there is no dunkin donut anywhere near gunnison uh to 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 the parking lot of the jc penny and there was an m wrap with montrose sheriff's office painted on it and an m wrap block in the road and i looked and i go it is the apocalypse we have to head back to the ranch yeah what could something. montrose be using they had a barricaded gunman in one of their hotels. Then they found out it was just a barricaded guy that was a drug addict that didn't want to go to jail for a warrant. But they had blocked the street. Brian, what do you think it looks like as, as a citizen when I see the MRAP? And again, somebody's going to go, yes, but those officers were safer. Yeah, the officer in the MRAP was safer. <laughs> yeah. Sooner or later, you got to get out of that son of a bitch. Yeah. Walk yeah. up and handcuff the guy. Do you know that right now, RAP has a, look it up, W-R-A-P, has a bolo. And the bolo RAP, uh, shoots out and immobilizes the person for a matter of seconds. How does it work? It immobilizes you not because it gives you a, a shock to your system or change your, your brain waves or anything else. It 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 uh, uh, understands the principle that the brain hates divided attention. It works to create an overwhelming amount of divided attention in the seconds after it's applied, shot from a distance. Then what do you have to do, Brian? You have to run up and arrest the person in the old-fashioned way. So, right. so I'm for those type of things, right? I'm for uh, technology advancing my likelihood of staying safe. But the MRAP is a bank vault on wheels, and you've got to get out of it. What, what was the big mistake that we made in Iraq? Okay, we, we made encampments. We literally made bases, forward operating bases that were so big, high walled palaces, right? And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, well, nothing's changing. We have to actually go outside of these walls. Come on. What, what's the matter? So, so do your analogy, the school shooting, what's the difference? Yeah. Listen, you, you can build the best lock. You can teach the kids to pile stuff against the door. You can improve the glass on the classroom doors and the lock mechanism and all that other stuff. And you keep thinking you're making your kids safer. You're not. You, you got to sit down with a kid. Look, fire drills make kids safer. Do you understand? Smoke detectors make kids safer. But it still takes the user to go, hey, what's that? Anybody smell smoke and get the hell out of that situation. Yeah. It, it, there's a human component to that. Well, and, and, and that's the thing in all of those cases with, with a lot of, with, with school shooters is all the, all the kids knew. It's it just walking up. Every it's not unlike knew. recently I had someone ask me, uh, I want to keep it vague because I know people people listen to the show that I know. Yeah. And they said, hey, 
if I told you, or do you think this person is doing that? And I go, I, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. It was, what if I told you this person was doing that? I go, I would not be surprised at all. I go, I have no, I have no evidence yep. to support whether that, that right. is occurring. But if you tell me that it is, it would not surprise me. So what does that mean? It means I, I have some general idea that something was going on there, right? Well, how is that any of the kid? If you said, if you walked up and said, hey, if you heard that so-and-so uh, shot up your school, uh, you didn't go, you stayed home sick and you heard so-and-so shot up your school, would that be surprising? And if they say, no, that wouldn't surprise me at all. There's your guy. Like it's, it's not hard and, and you got we, it, but we, we don't want to intervene. And, you know, I don't want to do the that wrong same thing. Standard. It's like this ridiculous way of looking at things is no, you have to get involved. They're children. Like, especially with you have to be involved. They know what's going on. We did the whole playground episode a few weeks ago, how everything right. you learn, you learn on the playground. Those kids know who's who in the zoo. I can grab the exactly insurgent right. and say, who's that over there? Oh, that's, that's, that's so-and-so. What about that group over there? Well, they don't like playing with him because of this. They can pick it apart right there. They know everything that's going on. Their whole life is there. Well, it's no different than the school. But no, Greg, we're going to bring in some outside experts who wrote a book on a topic that they've never actually done before, yep. but they wrote a never great actually book been on it. The scene. They've, they've, they've actually had a, you, you're right. They've never prevented a school shooting before, but they wrote a great book about it. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're going to, we're going to come up with this analysis tool. And then after it's just, it's just junk. It's so bad. And I, you know me, I'm, I, I want to, I'm ready to like call people I know. out on it. I know. And that's why I like to bring those topics up. No. And Brian, that's a great point. So, so, Let's, if we're going to hurt some feelings, let's hurt some feelings right now. So uh, uh, every single cop that was ever a cop that went through the same police academy, I, I, I identify, first of all, 18,000 police uh, agencies, uh, uh, every one of them doesn't have a police uh, uh, advisory board and an academy and FTOs and everything else. Sometimes they got to outsource, Brian. Smaller agencies have to send their people somewhere else or a smaller agency will get an officer that's trained from somewhere else or say you have to have this training. Okay, so I've known legends in my time. I've known the average copper in my time, and I've known a large amount of coppers over, uh, even the, with 30 years experience that were oxygen thieves. You get what I'm saying? Right. They'd never done a damn thing. But that didn't stop them from using their bona fides. We use two terms way too much in, in, in life, hero and subject matter expert. Those right. two terms we use all the time. So now that person comes out and that person's got a, a, a special training, whatever, look, Dig deeper than the resume. Find out who these people are because most of them are charlatans. And I don't mean the person that you hired for your organization. I mean, stop for a minute and take a look deep, deeper than the person was a soldier. Same thing with special forces or yeah, U.S. Well, Navy SEALs. Any, any these are our military, friends yeah. and we love them. And, yeah. and they've gone through the training. But guess what? Not all of them come out the same. And not <laughs> all of them have combat experience. And not all of them are they're wonderful. And I'm, I'm saying that when you do that, Brian, what you do is you say, this person has a PhD in uh, abhorrent psychology. Okay. And how much street work did they do in school shootings, Brian? Now, now right. if you're talking about studying or you're talking about going and conducting interviews and going to like the pace shooting in, in, in Florida, you know, when you're talking about a subject matter expert, you're not talking about somebody that I've read every one of the books on this topic. Ah, stop. You get what I'm trying to say? And, and all of a sudden you bring into your boardroom, you say, okay, this uh, former, you know, Delta force commando is going to come in. Yeah. People want to take, and your HR person is sitting there going, wait a minute. I don't understand the correlation. There's great training out there. So and training doesn't have to be uber expensive. You just have to search for the right training to fit the glove. Well, the, the, so, so let's, let's get into that because that's, that's obviously the, the point of a thing kind of thing. Um, because there, there's a lot of, there's talk out there. There's platitudes, you know, yep. people, organizations say, Hey, put your people first. You got to invest in your people. We get, and what they do is either throw money at something yep. or, um, give some different privileges to those employees. Well, investing in your people is, is building them up, is training them, right? Yep. So in, in a sense, you know, like training is a technology, meaning better training is a, is a, 
is a in the in the broad definition of the sense of a technology um the higher level of training you have at something the more effective and efficient you will be right so so that training process let's say i put you whatever that is for whatever subject it is if you get i don't care if it's learning to you know work the fryer at mcdonald's like exactly. you need training in that so once you can do it, okay now i can do it faster and more efficiently i know all the tips and tricks that makes me more effective i now need less people to do the same job as the is the idea well, it's, it's no different than any of these problems, like, but we, we pass everything off. And, you know, if you look at the recent one in Michigan, it's, we, we go back and forth and in, in about responsibility, right? So, so like the recent school shooting in Michigan, where they're, they're, they're putting, uh, uh, they're trying to charge the parents with some sort of charges um, for, for, you know, not having, not preventing this in some manner, um, which that's shaky legal ground right there. Uh, but without getting into that, the idea is we, we want to go, we, why don't we just focus on this kid and what he did? I mean, right. why, why don't we focus on the, the person responsible for the incident, directly responsible for the incident that, that didn't have to do what they did. They made a choice, but it's like, when we do that though, people are uncomfortable doing that in many situations because I think it's because we're then saying, Greg, that means I'm potentially responsible for my actions, right? Meaning we're, we're all responsible for this. If it's, you know, you, you get what I'm saying? Because you see these different cases where they want to go after some people in some cases and in other cases they say, well, no, they didn't know any better. And it's like, you, you can't yeah, exactly. have this. Address so, the behavior. Stop, stop addressing emotion. Stop. Uh, for example, I just sent you that this morning. The, the, the woman in, in uh, Chicago, uh, that that uh, her actions led to the death of her six-year-old. She just got a $5 million bond. Brian, she couldn't have paid a $50,000 yeah, bond. Yeah, okay, she paid so a $5, that's egregious. Bond, yeah. That's yeah. ridiculous. And, and we did it because of emotion. So number one, take emotion out of your argument. Number two, take skin color out of your argument. Right now, I can hear people uh, clattering and fighting. And, and the third thing is, let, let's make sure that we deal with the issue, the behavior, the responsibility rather than all of the other stuff. So we're going after parents for the first time ever in this shooting. I told you how important that was yeah. for Oxford, uh, but we're going around it the whole wrong way. We're saying, keep those bastards in jail over Christmas and New Year. That'll teach them. I don't teach them shit. Yeah, That's not what it we're going to do. You can't unring the bell. You, we want to create a standard where people say something is wrong. So then we go to Texas where Texas has two, two in just a matter of a month, uh, uh, incidents where people called and said, hey, uh, this quality of life is going down because this guy won't mow his lawn. And they ended up in barricaded gunsmen with shooting. One uh, involved the death of, uh, of the, the, the uh, person oh, with the long yeah. lawn. The other both ended up in barricaded gunmen. Just one was de-escalated. Brian, we can't continue to come in with a hammer to solve all our problems. And yet we do programs where people come back from the military and they say, we want to apply this military standard. Now, right now, somebody's going to go, hey, that man that's what you do with your company no we don't no it's we not talk about human behavior we, we we have nothing to do when when we give an analogy about something we give a worldly analogy about all of the situations that could occur and at the end you have to think your way out of those well, problems that's you know? that's when people do say that it's like oh your program in the military this is like well, yeah. hang on, hang on. this program existed before the military adopted it, it. long before the military <laughs> like, and i'll tell you the other thing when when you went to the range they didn't issue you ammo you didn't shoot you thought when you were at a thousand meters, you watched the village and you said, it's Colonel Mustard in the study with the pipe wrench. That's how you won, Brian. And, and, and problem solving, sense making a situation, then problem solving it. Why, why don't we teach our kids in the class? Instead, we teach the kids what to do at bang. Kid pops so, up, starts shooting. Let's do all this. We never push that dial left, Brian. We be, because, left. you know, it's it's um, you know, the, the iPhone is a, is a great analogy, um, yeah. meaning I have I, I'll pay for my iPhone. I, I've got the whichever model. I don't have the latest one on. You've got one. Your, your pictures, it. your pictures are amazing. Those cameras you. are awesome. You should but, see the selfies but, I take. Yeah, but the, <laughs> I don't want those. In Please stop shower. sending those. <laughs> um, uh, they so but but the idea is like you're 
everyone, most people using their phone, their iPhone, like it, that phone can do so much more than you even know about, let alone yeah. utilize. There are so many different features on that, so many different things it can interface with, so many things it can do to and be involved in your life in a number of different ways. You literally do not even use all the features. It's an over-engineered piece of equipment for what most humans use it for. So the idea is like, we always want the latest and greatest and newest, but but, but, but we're not even taking advantage. We won't take the time. So I'll spend the money because it's whatever it is a month for my phone bill, a hundred and something dollars a month yep. for the, uh, my unlimited plan, right. That I have plus on top of that, the payment for the phone, which is like $800 or something, whatever yep. it is spread out over the country. So I'll pay for that, but I don't want to take the time to sit down and go through a video tutorial on how to use it better. I don't want to take the time to sit here and learn all these different little tips. So it has to alert me. It says, Hey, there's this tip you can do. There's this tip you can do, but you can literally go on YouTube and, and spend the rest of your life watching videos on all of the things that your iPhone can do, but you don't want to take that time. You pick up the phone. No, no, no. I got this. Yeah, I got it right here. I know. I know how to use this. It's fine. I've been using a phone my whole life. Right? So that's part of the problem is that Everyone wants the new, well, we need new policies. We need new training. Let's spend some money over here. Let's hire this company to get us all a fucking certificate in something, which yes. is worth the the price of the piece of paper that it's fucking printed on. All it right? would be better so, if you rolled up that certificate and, 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 yeah. and smoked and so, it. Oh, yeah, or wipe your ass with it, yeah. whatever it is, uh, yeah. uh, because it it's obviously doesn't work. Because But that's our well, world now. Well, our world the, is certification. Look at the, everyone look at the world of executive at the protection. Michigan, Greg. Yeah, everyone yeah, was yeah, certified exactly. and had their training week before exactly so so listen listen here's a name that you're never going to hear and brian i'd ask you to consider putting it on our site because i love the man and i know you do too and i love the work that he does uh from canada uh former le brian willett oh so he's amazing. brian uh, first of all amazing. first of all it's the number one thing that i read when he publishes it yeah, on uh, linkedin uh, he's like one of the few people amazing. on linkedin who actually put out valuable content and 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 guess what it, it's not only verifiable it's scientific and, and guess what it's uh, a consistent, consistently great yep. stuff. So, so Willis's last thing uh, that nobody reads, and I hope they do read it, Brian, because I love you. Uh, 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 Willis's last thing is about these training things, these these myths that have been yeah, around forever. Amazing. Now, listen, uh, I started training in the '70s, and we've updated like the phone. I love your analogy about the phone. We've updated that phone every time. Uh, for those of you listening, Combat Hunter was an incredible program, but we're not in Iraq anymore. Okay, we had a modified Combat Hunter for Afghanistan. We're not in Afghanistan anymore. So take a look at it. If you're still studying the original Combat Hunter program, uh, uh, it's outdated as that flip phone you got, Motorola. You got to update that shit because the technology and the world and things change. So Willis talks about what you and I were talking about. Now, this is the amazing thing. It's about a week after you and I had the discussion where I said a spurious claim was made by one of these training companies. And the training yeah. company said, this will improve and it's better than long-term training and it's faster and all that other stuff. I go, these are spurious, scurrilous claims and they're going to come back to bite him in the ass. And Willis writes about it. But Willis writes about it like a Canadian and says, hey, calm down. You know me, yeah. I'm rattling the cage. <laughs> he he uh, puts in these incredible quotes, took the research and took the time to say most of the stuff that you've learned about training is false. Training does change behavior. Uh, his point as well is training changes behavior. But then you got the charlatans that are out there that write something about muscle memory or, or uh, uh, you know, blink, uh, uh, which is a great thing. I, I love Gladwellian thinking, uh, but that doesn't change the ground truth. The ground truth changes when you give the person, look, uh, 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 at the ranch, uh, we used to buy uh, fly fishing boxes that had the PR uh, Powderhorn Ranch brand uh, yeah. uh, logo on them, and you opened them up, and the funny thing about them was that all the flies were in there. The only difference was uh, the wing or whether they were beadhead. So the wing shape, whether they were back or forward, and the, the, whether they had a little uh, uh, silver or gold bead on the front of them, Brian, the tented wings that looked like a little tent, but all the flies were white. And then what we had is we had a number of markers in different earth tones. We would take that and give it to the fly fishermen and go out and say, we're going to study etymology. We would take a rock from the shore and roll it over and look at the bugs that were there. Then we would take a white fly that we bought for almost nothing, and we would color it to match the flies on the shore. Yeah. Everybody else was going in and buying a fly that cost $9 a fly. You know how many flies you use fly fishing every day? And then, you know, they, they would have a custom box with the, the three things in this, you know, fly. And they're wondering why the, the, the trout aren't biting. Because those trout have never seen uh, yeah. a, a Gander Mountain. 
You see what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Those cash game trout are up in the middle of nowhere and they eat what's around them every day. That's what I'm talking about with training. We have to do is you have to have training that is bespoke to the skill that you're trying to teach. You have to look, I'm all for having a speaker come in uh, uh, and get a, a veteran, hire a veteran to come in and speak to your organization. You'll be blown away at their insight and, and magic. But if there's no correlation at the end, what I mean when I talk about finding an IED and finding a student in class that might explode. Do you see what I'm saying? If that correlation doesn't happen in your brain, if you don't understand the, 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 the sense making, how it leads to problem solve, and then creates a decision point, and Willis gets it. He's one of those guys that gets it. So he puts it in there too. So all of these claims that, hey, I can teach you better because I did it. What you're doing is you're hiring a guy. Do you remember a long time ago, that other guy that was doing the training in country and he, and he wasn't in country and his training still isn't around anymore. Why? Because you hired the guy. Of course he could do it. He was Burt Wonderstone. He was the fucking magician, but guess what? It didn't transfer. That skill didn't transfer to every person in your unit. Our goal when we come to training is that every single module that we teach you, you're able to walk out of that room, no matter how many modules you have and apply it right then. And we don't give certificates yet. Well, some of the places we teach insist on creating a certificate. The certificate doesn't mean you're fluent. Doesn't mean you learned a thing. It yeah, just means you attended. Yeah. And, and um, you know, there's, there's a, a, a lot of issues with, um, with, with different training companies and how that stuff works. And, and I know people are a lot of more well-intentioned or think yep. that, that a lot of what we're doing, well, is is well-meaning well-intentioned and well-researched and well thought up it's just not going to solve the problem like it's yep. it's again it works it's, it it's, works perfectly in, for, in the closet for, and people walk away going just like the funnel cake brian people walk on walk away well, going it was a damn finest funnel it, cake i it, ever ate it, it goes back to this uh, uh tangible uh object or process or thing it's like well look i i have this like i i'm i'm good my house is secure i have a sh i have a gun it's like oh, okay, go on. <laughs> like that—that that doesn't mean anything. Or, or you know what? That we—that person has a gun. The gun is the issue. That's why I bring it up because humans are are, are, are horribly uh, hypocritical sometimes. Or we won't apply concepts that really work in in one area to another. We think it has to be redone or redesigned. You know what I mean? It, one of the things that. What you know, it's like what I always say about human behavior. It's incredibly more complex than than most people realize, and and it's and it's and it's way more simple than people are willing to accept. People people won't accept sometimes, like how simple sometimes people are. Like, well, I got angry and I killed the guy. And someone's like, that's impossible. There has to be something else there, right? Nope. Jimmy sometimes, would never ever kill a so, guy. So, I knew so, Jimmy. So, so, sometimes it's yep. it's literally that simple, yep. right? Yep. And and we don't want to accept that. And and then because we don't understand these problems, it goes back to what I was talking about at the beginning about not clearly defining what the problem is, not clearly understanding the contributing factors involved in this. We look for this simple answer and you know that is now in 2022 and, and the last however many years is translated into okay we have this online thing that everyone logs in and does we're certified we met the requirements we're good well hopefully what good comes from that the recent school shooting in michigan is that that shit changes and it goes away because um liability is is now going to be a little bit different and, and who is actually responsible for this stuff and and i think that maybe maybe that could be a, a, the catalyst for change but we need to stop looking at it as well i just i buy i bought this program we hired a company greg no you have to do you have to be the one who actually takes responsibility and goes out and does it. It has to be a proactive thing. You have to get people on board. And that does that take training and time? Yeah, it takes time. It's yep. it's likely no more expensive and in many cases less expensive than than what people are spending their money on. But here's much, the problem. It takes it, it it takes time and calories, Greg. I you mean I have to go burn calories? I have and to here we are. Involved? Here we are back to the analogy of doing the funnel cakes. When I actually had to do it at home and plug it in and bring the yeah. oil and use a thermometer and oh, make sure a lot the oil more involved was... than I thought. Exactly. It's and you know what? To go I down never consider pay, that. Pay eight bucks for a giant piece of you fried see what dough. I'm saying? Because there, all I got to do is stand in line. And I'm okay with standing in line. I'm okay with standing in line, Brian. The idea is that absolutely everything that we've talked about, again, 
some people are going to walk away or, or, or drive away or do whatever the hell you do today. And, and some people are going to go, oh, man, here they are. They're bashing cops or the prosecutor or my school or my school system or anything else. We're not bashing any of that. We're bashing the old thinking. We've got to take away that old school thinking that's still uh, 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 so steeped in historical mythology and bullshit. You get what I'm trying to say? The yeah. cryptozoology, that, that we've got to shine the light on it and kill it. And we've got to say that training is better than a thing. And, and if you have a thing, the thing is ridiculously worthless without the training. And if you don't have the buy-in of the students and the teachers and the community, you're never going to solve sh school shootings. You want to call, uh, solve domestic violence homicides? Uh, uh, take away marriage. Okay. Yeah. Then they all just become right. homicides. What are we stupid? Yeah. But we do things like that, Brian. We think that, listen, the, uh, uh, it's just after New Year and you're standing at SHOT Show listening to us on a podcast and you're looking at that uh, thermal uh, walkie-talkie, which is also a <laughs> soap mug. lamb. Do you see it's, what I'm saying? It also it's, brew, it brews coffee, coffee mug too. and a hat. And yeah. it's a winter hat. Well, you get a t-shirt with it too. If we just had 90 of those, that would solve, <laughs> that all, would solve all the problems. And I'm taking back and I'm, I'm telling you one thing. Look, I'm a fat ass, but I work out every single day, even when I'm hurting. You know why? Right. It, because I, 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 when I do the, the, what's the guy that just died in bed? Uh, uh, Bob Saget. You, you, you see, when I do my Saget, Marin, I, I've got in, in, in uh, whoever first finds my body, they're going to put me in a dress. They're going to fill the room yeah. with uh, bonbons uh, uh, and, and, you know, uh, uh, turn it into a petting zoo, whatever. I want it to be memorable. So I'm going to go out under the best terms possible. And even though it hurts, I do it every day. I study every day. I rehearse every day for what I do. We have to stop thinking that there's a tool out there that's going to stop it. The, the, the kid had the gun in his bag, and it was incumbent upon you to check that kid, and nobody did. That's a yeah. human failure, Brian. That's not a the, system failure. Um, AI is not going to help us out of that situation. His his doodles his drawings on the pieces of paper that they found in class before this ever happened were almost identical to uh harrison and Tybold and it unbelievable i mean all, it, did you not get a shiver if, when i sent you that that, if that you, piece of the article? yeah if you held them next to each other you would have thought it was just another page in their journal like you would have literally but, thought it was just another page in their journal we're not bashing your school we're not bashing your police agency we're trying to empower you why it, because I've met shitty 7-Eleven clerks. I've, I've met a shitty, shitty librarian. I've met a lot I of shitty doctors. I consistently get a <laughs> shitty haircut. Okay, you get what I'm trying to say? But but certain things we, we have to do, certain things we have to accept when it comes to a lesser standard of training for your personnel, go out, research the training, get the training, and then empower those people to use the training. Don't hang the certificate on a wall. Kick that person out into the hallway and say, now go apply your trade. Go do the thing that you learned, you know? And, and I'll tell you, Brian, uh, uh, I fear that the SHOT Show is going to sell a lot of parkas. And I feel that they're going to sell um, a lot of deep Well, that's, that's, that's the challenge to throw it. And it ain't going to make anybody smarter. Do you think, wait, do you think they'll be selling funnel cakes there? We we won't be there. I have a I have I'm a so bad that... funnel cake experience. Not a bad oh one. It was too much of a good experience. We'll call it that. Oh, yeah. From when I was a kid, back at Irish oh, yeah. Fest, two. Oh, my I, God. I, I ordered a funnel cake and then they screwed up and made two because two different workers there thought I had it, so they just gave me the second one as well. So as That's a not good. as a kid, what's better than one funnel funnel cake? Two of them. Three. I put both both of them down and felt on top of the world for 30 seconds and yep. then got a little dizzy and then the room started spinning and then I vomited profusely. So one funnel cake is my limit. Uh, Marin, I've learned that. That's but, how Diabito lost his foot. But I'll tell but, you right now. But the challenge is not to eat funnel cakes. The challenge is, um, you know, what, do, what are you looking for? Do you, are you looking for a thing or are you looking for a think? Uh, yeah. uh, are you looking for a, a tool to use in a specific situation, or are you looking for a thought process, a mental model, a, a way yep. to to make better decisions, a way to act on the information and the policies and procedures that you already have? You know, what are you trying to do here? I mean, there is no golden piece of the puzzle, right? There is no thing that you can go get that solves your problems. Like it, it, they're just, it, it, it's we keep making stuff that maybe solve one part of the problem or or yep. help alleviate it, but but. It, it, that's all it's meant to be. A metal detector is there to prevent someone from potentially bringing a gun onto an airplane at an airport. Okay, well, 
that that's not the only thing they can bring on. That doesn't solve the problem. Yep. That doesn't say, hey, now we're good. No, no, no. There's there's 10 million other things they got going on. There's a screener. There's a baggage screen you go through. There's people that ask you questions. Exactly. There's a, there's a, like, it, it's not just this one thing, but we keep having this mindset of it. And let then me, you'll get me. the well. We, well, now we need the cameras and the balustrades and the and this and the razor wire fence. And the, it's like, do do you need that? Do do you exactly. need that, or or do you want to just make your people better at identifying this stuff? Which is the and another thing argument. Yeah, you get yeah. what I'm trying to well, say. You're going to need a subscription mean... service on that too, Greg. So uh, I'll talk about a I'll talk about a boss back in the day. I'm not going to name him because I I uh, uh, his son is still around. I love the guy to death. Everything else. But the situation is funny, but I want you to listen to this tragic comedy and understand what it means. So we're all getting ready to graduate from the academy. I was the only one that was going through the academy that had just come out of the military. So we had to go to the arms room because we none of us had a gun belt, a Sam Brown or a holster. And all the holsters were uh, either a flap holster that was a cross draw or these holsters that had this swivel on them. So when you sat in your police car, the, the holster wouldn't oh. ride up on you. It was the worst leather gear ever. So yeah. as we were in line with that, then we were getting our 38s, Brian, you know, and, and, and you got to imagine the revolvers that they were issuing. And so we're at the end of the line and the arms guy is talking to the shift lieutenant who I won't uh, say who he is. And he goes, well, we can't give these guys guns to, to drive from here to Macomb for the graduation if we don't issue them bullets. And the lieutenant looked gobsmacked and he goes, what are you talking about? And he goes, well, we're issuing them the guns. They're going to the graduation. Then they're going to come back and, you know, take off the guns and go back to, you know, the FTO training. You know, th these aren't the guns they qualified on, but we can't give them empty guns. We got to give them bullets. And Lieutenant shook his head and goes, I don't get it. Then he goes, <laughs> we can't let them leave the police station to go to the college, graduate, and then come back without bullets and their guns. They're coppers. They're going to be wearing uniforms and yeah, badges. So what if they encounter something? What yeah. if something comes up? And Lieutenant goes, nah, we're not going to give them fucking bullets because if we give them bullets, one of them's going to go out there and one of them's going to come in progress and are going to shoot. This argument went out for 15 oh, minutes. We Jesus. almost missed the bus to go to our graduation. Brian, in the old days, you showed up with a badge and a gun. In the older days, it was a badge and a truncheon. Good coppers, good soldiers. They understand to utilize the stuff that they're given. And would it be wonderful to have all this new wave and newfangled stuff? Exactly. But if it doesn't come with the training and the mindset, if it doesn't come with the understanding of the spirals that come from that tool, if you, you know what, if you're going to advertise something to me, don't come to me with an MRAP with a mini gun on top of it and go for urban law pacification, it's, because I'll call bullshit yeah, every time. Yeah, no, I, um, yeah, it's a over-reliance on, on things and, and it, it is what it just, a can, it, it's going to continue the cycle is what's going to happen. So now we, we get, you know, it just, it, we, we get these stupid little data points that show, well, look, they paid for this. And then technically here there were less and you know what, not as many That's people died for. here. And it's like this, yep. this actuarial table of shit yep. and yep. it's just shit. Like you're okay, the, the, That's way the line right there. <laughs> actuarial table of shit. That's the buzzword for today's episode. Put that out. There's your title. <laughs> no, because I, that's what's happening, isn't no, it? No, it is. We're, because... we're saying, and was this person certified at this time to do this thing? That has nothing to do with breaking down the situation and say they made a good choice, a logical, a rational choice, or they didn't. No, I, 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 I agreed, and um, I don't know. I, I think that's a that's a good place to to end on because I'm I'm already starting to get too specific on some of the some of the people because you're and angry things. Yeah. and it's okay to be angry listen yeah. uh, there's certain things that it's okay to be angry about because anger comes and goes yeah. this isn't rage and we're just trying to stimulate you that's listening or watching to think and not think outside the box there's plenty of room in the box there's, to play. There's, you 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 don't Bottom get to okay. Schrodinger oh you, my god uh, don't, not, don't, don't, don't 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 please don't don't Let's not let's not get into let's not get into that. But other than than the I, I, we Brian Roll should write on the the uh, the thinking outside the box analogy. I've met like three people in my entire life that I would go that person they can think outside the box. Yep. Every, the rest of everyone just just focus on what's inside the box and utilizing yeah. what's in there. <laughs> Get used to the I'm, box. I still haven't Embrace figured out all the, the box. The, I, I still haven't figured out everything in the box exactly. yet. So maybe someday. There's two more corners than mine. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> hey, but that thing, that shout out to Will, it looks, we, we run into a lot of well, great I'll put his link in the a lot episode, of great soldiers. I'll put his link in the episode details. Yeah. Folks, dive into one. You'll be hooked for good. Yeah, he's 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 amazing. And um, so if you're listening, there's, there's plenty more on our Patreon site. We answer all kinds of listener questions on there as well. 
Um, and, you know, we ask people just if you enjoy the podcast, you can check out the Patreon site or at least just, you know, share this episode with your friends or someone and say, hey, here's why I think you could you should listen to these guys and and um, it, it just share that out there. It really it really helps and it helps get the message out and then yes. hopefully um, helps get us uh, in front of some of these problems. Uh, it only a matter of time before it gets to the right person um, because we've dealt with this stuff before. But anyway, it's. I think that's that's good for the day before I get into two specifics and 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 someone sends us a nasty letter from their law firm and saying, yep. you know, whatever. Oh, that's um, coming. Well, you know what? They knew or should have or known. Should have known. I yep. have yep. a year well, training of emails comes, training going comes. back and forth saying this is what we can provide and they passed. So you know what? Exactly. Uh nah, we, we could go we could go hours onto this one. I I would say this. All of this talk of funnel cakes has made me hungry. And in my post-run yeah. malaise, I have to eat at least half of my own body weight. Right. You get what survive. I'm saying? Yeah. To survive. So <laughs> well, it's winter, too. I've so got to go in and eat like up. a turkey, a ham, and a <laughs> loaf of bread. You got to stay All warm up there in Gunnison. <laughs> All right, man. I think that's a... It's on Funnel cakes is a good good ending for the show. Um, thank, Elephant thanks. ears, baby. Thanks everyone uh, for tuning in. Again, we appreciate your support and listening and, and following and sharing it with your friends. And don't forget that training changes behavior.